Hello everyone! Uh, this game was a suggestion from a subscriber, Mr. Supernova111, and uh, since a lot of you said that you would enjoy a game from a, from a less known player, uh, I decided to give this one a go, as uh, that previous video by Kovacevic really took up a lot of my time. Uh, so the game was played in 2016, it was the Women's Chess Olympiad in Baku, Azerbaijan. Uh, we're, we have a game between uh, Maria Florencia Fernandez and uh, women's grandmaster uh, Mitra Heazipur of Iran. And uh, Maria here, uh, although she's not FIDE rated, uh, well, although I think she is now, but uh, she was a, a women's national champion in Argentina in 2009 and 2013. Uh, without having a FIDE rating, uh, although her rating in Argentina was somewhere around 2150, maybe even 2200. So definitely quite a matchup for her. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Maria has the white pieces and he, uh, she plays d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3 and bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say that, even though she wasn't FIDE rated when she won uh, the Argentina National Championship, uh, she did, uh, she did uh, win the entire tournament without losing a single game. And her opponents were some uh, international masters and uh, w w women international masters. So, quite an achievement, definitely. Uh, okay, so we have Bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense, something that uh, appears quite a lot on this channel for some reason. Uh, we have a3. Uh, bishop captures, b captures, and d5. Uh, c captures on d5, e captures on d5, and e3. Uh, black castles here, uh, we have bishop to d3, and c5. Uh, and the standard standard move here is uh, something like knight to, d, knight to e2, uh, going for the famous Karis variation, followed by b6. Uh, but instead of knight e2, uh, Maria goes for f3. Uh, restricting the, the movement of this knight and allowing him to jump to e4 or g4 and uh, preparing maybe to push uh, e4 in some variations. So we have b6, uh, now knight to e2, uh, bishop to a6 and uh, white castles, rook to e8, uh, knight to g3 and immediately uh, Mitra goes for h5. This knight is somewhat awkwardly placed on g3, so definitely an idea would be to kick it away with h4. Uh, bishop captures on a6, knight captures on a6, and queen to d3. And uh, here Mitra plays knight to c7. Uh, you don't want to push h4 just immediately, you know, this is uh, better left as a threat than, than uh, to execute it immediately, because after knight f5, uh, the queen on d3 is guarding the knight on f5, uh, the knight is threatening to capture on h4, so this would be kind of pointless for black. Uh, so after queen d3, knight to c7, uh, bishop to b2, and immediately c4. And this does seem like a justified decision, uh, kicking the queen away from d3, the queen goes to e2, and now this uh, bishop does seem poorly placed on b2, uh, this c4 pawn. Uh, pretty locked uh, locked down this uh, pawn on c3 and the, the bishop doesn't really have a role here. He will either have to be developed by pushing e4 and through bishop to c1 or maybe maybe by pushing a4 and playing bishop to a3. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, knight to e6, uh, queen to d2 now as uh, if the queen stays on e2, knight to f4 uh, is a terrible threat. Uh, the pawn is pinned, and after the queen moves, knight comes to d3, and this will be this will truly be a monster knight. Uh, queen to d2, knight to f8. Now preparing uh, to remaneuver the knight to g6. Uh, rook a to e1. Uh, knight to g6 now. Uh, queen to c2. Now definitely preparing to push e4. Uh, rook to e6. Bishop to c1. Uh, we have queen to e8, and it seems that uh, this queen to e8 uh, stops white from playing e4. Uh, but to really see why, uh, you do have to calculate a lot. Uh, if white were to push e4 here, uh, then h4 is coming. You first have to get rid of the knight. The knight is also defending e4. And after a move like knight to f5, uh, d captures an e4, f captures an e4, uh, you can't capture with the rook. If rook captures, then white has this knight to d6 move, uh, forking the rook and the queen, and you either have to move the queen and lose the rook, or you, you capture the rook on e1 and you give up the queen for, for a piece and the rook. 
so if uh, you don't want to do something like this, uh, you would have to capture with the knight. After f captures on e4, you have to capture with the knight on e4. And this leads uh, to bishop to h6, and this is this is quite a variation. Uh, after g captures on h6, as you were threatening to capture on g7, uh, d5, uh, the rook has to go to e5, rook e5, and now knight captures on h6 with check. Uh, king to g7, now knight captures on f7, again attacking the rook. After the rook moves to e7, now you capture the knight. Rook captures on e4, and after rook captures, knight to d6. Again, forking the rook and the queen, and after queen moves, knight captures. And after queen captures on d5, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty equal position. White is a little better here, uh, but, uh, you know, it can go either way. So, uh, I don't know if uh, Maria calculated this and uh, didn't go for e4, but, uh, okay, after queen to e8, she played queen to f5, uh, and Mitra pushed h4. Since the queen is now occupying f5, uh, better to get rid of the knight now, so the knight can never jump to, e to f5. Knight to h1 was played, queen to a4, uh, preparing to double up rooks on the e-file, uh, and uh, this is, uh, this is in fact, in an indirect way, stopping e4. If e4, then queen to c2, and uh, the pawn on e4 will be pinned. Uh, but uh, Maria plays e4 anyway. Uh, queen to c2 is played, now that pawn is pinned, if pawn captures, then queen captures queen, uh, knight to f2, uh, queen captures on c3, and okay, black black won a pawn here, uh, we have e5, knight to d7, uh, and rook to d1, now protecting the d4 pawn, and uh, here uh, Mitra played b5, and this isn't something, uh, something that uh, is really in, in the spirit of this game, uh, probably a better idea would be something like knight to e7, and after you kick the queen away from f5, uh, play queen to c2, now the queen assumed this uh, very nice diagonal and she can uh, join the defense anytime she wants. Uh, but instead after this rook to d1, b5 was played and this allowed white uh, Maria a very important tempo. She plays knight to h3, now threatening moves like uh, knight to f4, knight to g5, and uh, there's a very little uh, black can do about this. Knight to e7 was played. Okay, this does kick the queen, queen g4, and now knight to f8. Uh, here, white does have a couple of options. Uh, he can either play, uh, she can either play a knight to g5, knight to f4, uh, f4 immediately is an, is an idea followed by f5, uh, but she decides to go for knight to f4. Now with a tempo on the rook, uh, rook to c6, and now queen captures on h4. Uh, she won back the pawn, and uh, the position is definitely uh, looking better for her. Uh, knight uh, comes to g6, now with a tempo on the queen. Knight captures, knight captures, and queen to g4. Uh, we have rook to d8, and f4. And this is, uh, of course, preparing f5, and uh, black should really do something about this, but it, it's not at all clear what. Uh, something like rook to e8 maybe or, or queen to c2 to maybe try to help out with the queen somehow uh, but a5 was played immediately uh, going for that b4 and creating a passed pawn uh, but this simply doesn't work uh, f5 now uh, and this is a th this f5 move is a big problem for black uh, if you if you play something like knight to e7 uh, then e6 and you're in big trouble uh, if you play f6, bishop to h6 is coming, and uh, white is completely winning here, and there is no defense. Uh, so after f5, uh, Mitra decided to play knight captures on e5, uh, giving up a piece for two pawns. A pawn captures, now we have queen captures, and rook d to e1, now assuming that open e file. Uh, queen to d6, uh, f6, now the threat is of course queen captures on g7 with checkmate, uh, g6 was played, and now uh, queen to h4. The idea is, of course, uh, queen comes to h6 and queen to g7, checkmate. So d4 was played, uh, rook to e7 now. Uh, as If you play queen to h6 immediately, uh, queen to f8 is defending checkmate. So rook to e7, not allowing the queen to go back to f8. This is very important. Although we are winning, you do want to... Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't want to give black any chances. Uh, queen to c5 now. 
And here, this is uh, again uh, a nice opportunity for white to blunder. Uh, uh, white played uh, bishop to g5 here. If you played queen to h5, now immediately it seems like there's no stopping checkmate, but black actually has uh, rook captures on f6. That's the whole point of this queen to c5 idea. Uh, and after rook captures on f6, you capture uh, queen uh, captures rook on e7, and you're still up a piece. Okay, you do have this bishop, but look at these pawns. So when they start marching forward, uh, that piece uh, doesn't really give white any advantage. So after queen to c5, uh, bishop to g5 was played. Now rook captures pawn isn't really a threat because bishop captures and the bishop guards the rook. Uh, and there's really nothing for black to do here. d3 was played with check, kind of prolonging the game. King h1, uh, rook captures, bishop captures. Now the threat is uh, queen to h8 checkmate. Uh, so uh, Mitra, for some reason, uh, doesn't resign here. She plays queen to h5. Uh, queen captures, g captures, and uh, rook to e5 now. Uh, so going for those pawns on the queen side. Uh, rook to d6. Uh, rook captures. We have rook captures on f6. Rook captures. And uh, I don't think uh, a woman grandmaster can really think that those pawns can win against two rooks. Uh, but for some reason she still doesn't resign. Uh, b4 was played. A captures, a captures. Uh, rook to d5. Uh, we have b3 and now rook to c uh, rook to b6 and uh, now in this position uh, mitra has finally resigned the game as uh, you can't really push any pawns uh, if you push this pawn the rooks can pick up any of the pawns and i mean you're down two rooks this is uh, uh, this is ridiculous <clears throat> but yeah uh, definitely a great game by uh, maria florencia and uh, always nice you know beating a higher rated opponent uh, so so good game uh, I, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for some less known players, uh, feel free uh, feel free to suggest them in the comment section using the hashtag, of course. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. And uh, I will see you soon.